I'm sure that you have heard about ChatGPT and you know different applications of ChatGPT in different disciplines. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to learn data visualization, specifically in Python, but in uh, any other programming languages as well. Okay, so let me tell you what I have and what I want to do. So I have a data set. Let me show you the data set. First of all, this is a Google, Google Colab notebook that I have over here, and I put a data set under uh, contents. If I double click on the data set, you can see that the data set is a time series, meaning that I have dates in my first column and in the index column. And then I have different columns starting from average air temperature all the way to total rainfall. So what I want to do, I want to visualize this data set using Python and Google Colab. But um, I'm going to assume that you don't know about Python and you don't know how to visualize this in Python. So you're going to ask ChatGPT to help you figure this out step by step. All right, so the first thing that I want to do, I want to introduce this data set to ChatGPT. Obviously, I cannot copy this data set and paste it to ChatGPT because it doesn't accept tables. But what I want to do, I want to describe this data set to ChatGPT. Essentially, I want to tell it what are the um, columns and what what are the name of ex exact name of the columns the header of the columns that i have over here all right just to be a little bit silly i'm going to start with a prompt that uh asks chat gpt if it's ready for my project and then um introduce my uh, project to it so this is what i've written and i'm going to say are you ready and obviously, ChatGPT is going to be ready for my project as well. So it's going to give me a warm message that, yes, I'm ready for that. All right. Next step is to introduce the data set to ChatGPT. I've already written the prompt just to um, make sure that I'm not going to take the time of this video. You can see that I have a time series, as you can see over here. I want my index column to be date. And then the other columns I have list. Uh, the other columns right over here. Um, so other thing that I want to do, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to sum to summarize the data set to me. Uh, so summarize the input data set for me. So it's going to summarize the columns over here and then the summarize different uh, columns that I have right over here okay so now i want to ask chat gpt to generate a python script that visualizes date versus average air temperature so exactly i'm going to write describe that generate a python script that visualizes date versus average air temperature notice that the names that i am using are exactly the names that i have introduced to chat gpt and these names are exactly the names of the columns that i have in my data set okay let's do this um, it is going to write this script for me but even more impressive is that after this it's going to describe this this script uh, script for me it's going to tell me that this sentence for example is going to read the csv file and then uh, this is going to plot it and so on and so forth notice that you need to change something some stuff over here you are the one who is running the code for example i know that my data set is not called your input data set my data set is called my underscore data okay so i know that i need to change this eventually i'm going to copy the script over here and then go to my google colab notebook and paste it right over here okay and again i'm going to change the name of data set my data set was called my underscore data all right and uh, everything else is the same i'm going to run the cell and you can see that automatically um, python is going to visualize this data set for me this is really really actually interesting and very helpful but what if i don't want a graph like this let's say i want a histogram right so again i'm going to ask that gpt to create a histogram of the data that i have introduced above and it's going to do the same thing and describe the script for me as well so notice that it's going to repeat itself right so again import pandas as pd import matplot 
the path matplotlib.pyplot at plt and load the data set. I don't want I don't you don't need to copy everything right now. You just can start from creating this histogram. And I'm gonna copy that and there is an explanation over here. And then I can um, add another cell over here and paste it over here and run this piece of code and you can see right now i have a histogram the frequency of the average air temperature is over here the good thing is that if i read this description i know that this is the bin size so i can change the bin size and run this piece of code again to have a different histogram this makes your job much easier and then you can read and learn about this piece of the code right so let's say that i don't understand this line of the code and i want to learn more about this remember the goal of this is to learn about data visualization so i'm going to copy this part and then go back to chat gpt and tell chat gpt that would you explain this part of the code it's going to give me an introduction of this plotting histograms and what it does for me and you can see that it explained what the bin sizes are and give you an overall summary this is very very powerful when you are learning data visualization okay so these are all simple graphs now let's make it a little bit more complicated what if i want to have a line graph like this but instead of having one variable as air temperature i want to have another line over here that describes um solar radiation and to make it a little bit more complicated i want the solar radiation to be on another y-axis on the right hand side right over here right so i'm going to describe this exactly what i said to chat gpt and that i want to have the total solar radiation on the right hand side and use different colors red for temperature and yellow for solar radiation it's going to create different axes for me and explain this piece of code as well so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this and wait for the explanation to be done and go over here and again add another uh, code cell and paste it over here and run this piece of code now you can see that i have two different um y-axis and the color the choice of color was really bad but the good thing is that i can see where the color is selected over here and i can change that okay so instead of red or i can ask chat gpt to do that for me right um, let's actually try that why not i'm gonna say in the above code change the red to um let's say uh, black and change yellow to green again let's modify i'm gonna copy that piece of code and paste it right over here and now run the piece of code there we go perfect so this is a better choice of color right now let's say that we want to add something add a note to um, the title of this right i'm going to write over here to add a note to the above generated figure that says these graphs are generated by the help of chat gpt and then run this I'm going to copy this again and paste it over here and run the code all right you can see that the, right now there is a note added over here that see these um, graphs are generated by the help of chat gpt you can see that right now date is actually masking some of the words over here so uh, let's ask chat gpt gpt to move this note a, a little bit lower move the note a bit lower let's see what it does uh, at this point i'm just experiencing or experimenting with this code to see what it does if it understands 
that uh, and automatically moves move this note lower for us. Okay, I'm gonna copy it again and paste it over here. Understood what we said and moved it over here. This is really interesting actually, and it's very helpful. So you can create uh, different types of graphs that you want using ChatGPT and then if you don't understand a part of it, you can ask GP, ChatGPT to explain that part for you. This was just a short tutorial to show you the great capability of ChatGPT so you can learn data visualization in Python using ChatGPT. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next video.